All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel, Santiago EQ over here. And today we're gonna be discussing the three things that people learn way too late in their USMLE prep. And well, hopefully with this video, you can learn them a little bit sooner and take advantage of them. And so the first thing that people learn too late in their prep is that the USMLE is not an exam that tests for everything in medicine. Because I think that's a very common misconception. People believe, oh my God, everything can appear on this exam every single detail, every single thing. And at first it seems like that. It seems like the exam is, can really ask you about anything. But as you move on with your prep, you quickly realize that they don't just ask about anything. They ask about a very few selected topics in a view in a very few specific ways. And again, I think that's important when you're prepping for the USMLE because you have to keep in mind, I'm not trying to learn everything about every disease or every concept. I'm trying to learn specifically what they like me, what, what they want me to know. The sooner you do that, the better score you'll have. And I just think that's important because I get a lot of emails from people saying stuff like, I spend way too many minutes and hours reading about every subject. I, for example, do a question and then spend an hour, a total, a whole hour learning about the topic that was embedded in that question. And once we dig a little deeper and exactly what are they doing, they are approaching each subject as if everything of that subject can appear in the test. And again, that's true to an extent. Every single thing can appear and you can get some questions, some really weird questions on your exam. But most of the times, 80% of the time, 90% of the times, you're just getting a spin-offs of the same question, just reshaped, just changed a little bit, a little bit twitches over here, a little bit twitches over there, and that's it. But it's the same script over and over and over again. So keep that in mind. But in any case, the second point that a lot of people realize way too late in their USMLE prep is that the USMLE is a totally different beast. So trying to copy paste the strategy that you use for your medical school exams is really not a good strategy here. Because again, it has a different set of conditions. And if you think, oh, I have learned all of my life by taking notes, doing flashcards and doing this, so I'm gonna do exactly the same with the USMLE, you're probably gonna bump into all sorts of walls. Because it's not the same beast. It's, 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 it has a totally different set of conditions. And the sooner you realize that, the sooner you're on your way to creating a system that actually works for you. So again, don't be closed to the fact that you may have to experiment with other ways of learning for this exam, because those hidden in those techniques that you may have never come across, that you have never tried, may be the best strategy for you. I personally found that the things that I used for my medical school exams, like taking notes, doing flashcards, really didn't work for the USMLE. For example, the notes. Notes were useless in the USMLE. I love my notes from, from my medical school. They help me organize my thoughts. I have a, a few videos detailing how I use them. But for the USMLE, completely useless. So again, keep that in mind. I have a few videos detailing approaches and techniques to the USMLE. Just keep in mind, it's really not the same as your medical school. Okay, and the last point that I wanted to bring up is that the USMLE is really not a race, it's a marathon. And this is one of the things that people, again, learn way too late and usually through the hard way. And I say that people learn this way too late because when you break down their strategies to study, most of their approach is targeted like if they were gonna study for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, not for a couple of months. And you should really have a different strategy when you're trying to go for the long run, for the, the two month, three month, six month period, and not for the couple of days period. Your approach should be totally different because Think of it, again, think of it like, like a marathon. If you start your marathon going all balls to the walls, trying to outrun everybody, chances are you're gonna be the guy who doesn't even finish the marathon. Now, in a race, that would be the best strategy, try to outrun everyone right from the get-go. In a marathon, that's not the case. And again, that's not to say that in a marathon you can't have short periods of bursts when you go all balls to the walls, like at the end of the race, at the end of the marathon, but you have to be very cautious how you distribute your efforts because they are really limited. And the same thing applies here. And so that's why I get very triggered when I see advice such as this one, which is, it literally says, get rid of your family, tell your children, lock yourself in a closet with books and Red Bull. 
which is a tweet from Conrad Fisher, which is a guy that I actually love. I love how he teaches medicine, but I couldn't disagree more with that advice. Because again, I think that should be your strategy if you're trying to study for a couple of days for a medical school exam that's really important, not for a couple of months. Because as, as much as you want, you're not a machine. You have desires, feelings, you get unmotivated all the time, you get tired, you don't want to do stuff. Being a human being, you're tied to a set of conditions that you really cannot just dispense with. And so the best strategy is not the strategy that uh, takes a leap forward in a couple of days and then burns you out. It's a strategy that keeps you studying for the longest time you can, in the most efficient way you can, for the longest time possible. And that strategy often involves things like keeping your family by your side, staying in touch with your friends, staying in touch with the things you'd love to do with your hobbies, because that strategy is the best strategy at the long term. And believe me, I've spoken with dozens of successful AMGs and IMGs, and all of them tell me the same. I wish I had reshaped my approach. I wish I didn't have the approach of going all both the walls of the attitude of, oh, I'm just going to push through this because there's a limit to the stuff that just pure motivation and discipline can do. So keep that in mind because believe me, being burned out just sucks. But in any case, that's really all I have for this video. I hope you found it useful. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video.